So a good way to start today is probably just to check in and see how everyone's doing. Um, Carlos especially, it's striking that he's not in his office with the headset on. It's like you of all people are in exactly the same configuration. So this is uh, shocking for me. The living room, screaming yes. child over there. <laughs> it's, it's just a new setting. You guys, um, everyone I assume is out for the semester. We are out for the semester, but uh, we are teaching online. Right. Which is really fascinating for a program that's all lab-based courses. Mm, now that's an interesting question. I was actually in a sort of different conversation about that earlier in the week, and I would like to hear more about that, I think, in <laughs> just a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> um, how about with you, Amy, uh, on the more on the graduate level? Yeah, so I primarily teach medical students, and so they're trying to figure out what they can or can't do, and, you know, they don't want them in the way using masks, but they still need training, and I saw actually NYU was graduating some of their physicians early to get them in the workforce earlier. Um, I'm on a sort of distance regional campus, so we do a lot of our lectures and teaching online, and again, I'm usually in video calls all day long, so it hasn't been as brutal a transition as I think it's been for other people. Um, and it was our med student spring break last week. And so, you know, now we're figuring out how to set up some blue jeans. Like you can do sub rooms and then even hop virtually from subgroup to subgroup and stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to be trying that next week. We'll see how that goes. It's funny you say that because um, I was in charge at my institution of doing um, like an undergraduate research symposium, which clearly isn't going to happen. But um, I was inspired by a conversation earlier this week about using the breakout rooms in Zoom here um, to be able to, some people were describing to me how you could actually simulate going around in between rooms and listening to people. I'm like, okay, that might be yeah. A disaster, but I'm in, I have to say I'm intrigued <laughs> for the concept. So I'm at least going to talk to someone about tomorrow, see if I'm willing to go drive down that road or not. But uh, I, I was at least uh, it piqued my curiosity. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, we well, we actually have someone who's talking about doing the same thing. Oh yeah. And she, she's like, it's just going to be virtual, and I was like, I need to know more than that. I know, right? And I don't know how she plans on doing it. And I've just advised her to like wait two or three weeks because the students are so stressed out right now exactly. that yeah. the thought, and I've just heard from some of them that this is all new technology. Each professor is using a different type of technology that they have to learn because some people like Zoom and some people like Blackboard and some people like Google Meet and that they're just getting very overwhelmed. So I was like, let everybody settle down before we try to figure out how to do a virtual symposium of like our whole department. And it's such good advice because we were supposed to, um, we were supposed to have a TEDx event in mid-April. And when this all broke down, we all thought we'd be back in two weeks, right? And so I said to people, should we keep doing that or delay it a week? And someone very smart told me exactly the same thing. It's like, dude, like at this point, people are just wanting to get done you need to get rid of all the extraneous stuff and i'm like yeah i kind of <laughs> i see your point on that actually <laughs> yeah i think that there's just this concept of we're overwhelmed so i think that we're just trying to like overwhelm them and not necessarily re we're like passing on our anxiety yeah, exactly. to them you will be as stressed out as we are whether you like it or not yeah <laughs> and so i teach a discussion class on monday afternoons and we all had to like meet online which was weird i was the only one who did video and so that was also weird and for the last 15 minutes we just chatted and i have grad students and i have undergrads and all of them just said like it's only monday and we're already like our anxiety levels like through the roof yeah and i've talked to several of my students that either have no internet or very limited internet and a couple of them are the most conscientious students i have and they're freaked out that they're going to fail all their classes now because uh, of this. Like, we'll, we'll figure it out don't worry but yeah if i were in their situation i'd be panicked too so and we are panicked so it's fine <laughs> <laughs> so i had um uh amy had said she hadn't looked at the paper much and i'll fess up that i picked the paper and i myself have not looked at it in great detail because 
I wanted us to, I wanted a stage to have the conversation about what we're doing to maintain a semblance of active learning in a video environment. And this is clearly not something that we are inventing from the ground up, that people have thought about this, that people do very cool things with online learning, uh, but that for the majority of us, it's sort of a on the fly, learning as we go approach. And so the main thing I wanted to accomplish today and uh, tomorrow morning, we talk about this again, is uh, just finding out what people are doing, uh, the strategies people are taking to uh, get, keep their classes moving, but also, uh, Jim, you mentioned a discussion. Like, how are, you, uh, how are you keeping your classes engaging in this environment? So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Yeah, so that's actually the class that I'm being funded through here. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> but wait, because I didn't advertise it, so I only have five students. So it's actually the perfect number for trying to do a discussion-based class. And they all showed up, which was wonderful. Beautiful, yeah. Um, and I also think that they, they want a little bit of flexibility, but sometimes they want a consistent schedule too. So I was like, I'm glad I'm doing like a little bit of both. But um, it's all flipped classroom. So I actually didn't have to do that much other than now we're not talking in person, we're talking via the internet. Um, and we had a few, a few snags. So Blackboard, we don't have Zoom. So we're limited with Blackboard. And apparently I'm very echoey. And I'm not going to go out and buy a headset anytime soon. So, you know, I just don't want to leave the house if I don't have to. So um, some suggestions that the students had, which were great, which is if you're not talking, use mute. And that seemed to help a lot. And um, I have one student who always likes to raise his hand anyway. So he just kept on pressing the raise hand button. And I was like, Nick, why are you raising your hand? And he's like, well, I want to talk and I don't want to interrupt you. And I was like, yeah. fair enough. So we've started implementing the raising hand. Um, so, you know, even the, the weird adjustment to now their homeworks are due on Blackboard. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so that, that was a, uh, not too bad of an adjustment, but I, ha I teach a lab class and that has been, it's actually two credits of research and one credit of lab, which is the worst combination. I wish, is, I wish it was one or the other exactly. rather than just the three credits oh. combined because I can't split it at this point. Yeah. Um, I gave an exam today and it didn't go great. Apparently my paper exam did not translate well to an electronic exam. Mm -hmm. um, it took them, half of them said that they didn't even come close to finishing that they i mean I, I thought that i posted it at midnight apparently it didn't go through blackboard so i was getting emails at like nine this morning that's like we can't find the exam we can't find this and i was like i don't know i can only see what i see i had one yesterday that i put everything up and the students told me it wasn't there and i'm like no i know it's there and i went and looked you have to click an extra thing to get it to actually publish and that's why they didn't do it like, god damn it yeah, so. <laughs> Little things yeah. like that that were learning as we go. Yeah, you know, and the, the students for this class are, they're great. So I feel really bad about like the bomb of an exam. So I told them that I'll grade them tonight. And well, they have until midnight tonight. So I was like, I'll grade them tomorrow. And if the grades aren't good, I'm probably just going to give them the short answer questions and say, pick two and you get a redo on them. Like pick any two uh -huh, you want. Yeah. You know, spend no more than 15 minutes and I will just erase whatever you had previously. Yeah. So, and I think I, yeah, that that idea of compassion and flexibility is something that just we all have to do right now, right? So. Yeah, and I took my class in a completely different direction, which is I actually made it 90% um, lab and I got rid of the lecture. And I spent the past week and a half developing um, labs in a box and I compiled all of the stuff that they needed and I shipped them everything. The last shipment went out on Tuesday. Uh, most of my students are local so a bunch of them just I came know, to campus that. and picked it up on Sunday. Um, what kind of it, lab is this? Oh, it's environmental sampling and analysis. All right. I was like, how's that? Because you can't send a lot of chemicals out, I would imagine. Those are things. No, and the, great <laughs> thing, the great thing about that class is we don't really use that many chemicals. So I kind of took some direction from like uh, science fair projects yeah, and yeah. whatever I could get on Amazon. So I, I shipped them like pre poured petri dishes and some swabs and some sterile water. And we do a soil sampling lab. So I ship them little containers of sand and clay. 
um, wow. and some shovels and they do a water quality lab. I got an increased budget to ship them like little pH meters and little like dissolved solid meters. Um, and what I'm using UV sensitive paper, which is something that like I gave some to my four year old niece and she made a lovely leaf. Um, but I'm expecting them to do something a little higher quality, like look at sunglasses or look at sunscreen or something. And then they have lab reports for the rest of the semester. I'm giving them about a half hour of just introduction to the topic and how to do the lab. And that's it. No more exams, no homeworks. Um, and then I've set up a discussion board so that they can comment on each other. So every Thursday, or every Monday I post a video, every Wednesday there's a quiz to make sure they understand like the safety in the background because I don't want them just like swabbing random things and not realizing what pathogens are. And then on Thursday they all have to submit whatever their project is and then there's a discussion board and they have to comment on three other students and then everything gets approved by me and then they can start the next week. So we're doing that for the next five weeks and they have uh, two big lab reports and then three just like shorter lab handouts that they have to fill out. Wow. So I can sleep now. The past week and a half trying to figure out how to do this has been awful. But now I was like, now I just have some videos to make because everything's been shipped. So whatever is shipped, that's what they get. I'm super impressed <laughs> and I hope you're planning on like writing this up maybe for Jimby or something when you're all done because that sounds like something you could like write up like basically tell your story say yeah. how you did this and like share it in something get a publication out of it that's yeah. Really cool. yeah i'll i'll talk with you about how to do that because yeah. right now we're just going to, but the great thing is everything's online so i will have access to everything that it was that, perfect and our outreach office actually reached out to me and was like hey because we do a lot of outreach mm -hmm. and they're hoping to still be able to do some of it so they were like what have you done with your students and can we apply it to like little kids that we can just you know buy these supplies i did it all for three hundred dollars yeah that's awesome um we, awesome. Were to, we were trying to get some things started here in our outreach efforts like a science in the box initiative mm -hmm. and i actually had some students working on it in the fall but we haven't actually done um right at the time where everything went to pot we had just started thinking about logistics and things like that so we're nowhere near being able to actually roll it out like in our head in our head it's brilliant but we haven't actually i was going to say if you want one that's ready to go okay that's good to know i may ask <laughs> well and the the ironic thing is that all of the other labs we've done like now we were getting to the good ones like everything we've done before has been like quality control or mm -hmm. how to design your study or here's yeah. an instrument or units so i was like you know we, we were getting to the good stuff so they were really disappointed um, if we couldn't, like they see the students always sampling for microbes on the quad and they always see them going around with all the monitors that I give them, like all of last year's students. So I was like, I would feel really bad cutting that out if I didn't have to, because they just were so excited about that aspect of it. So How as I said, I'm, I can now sleep. I can now sleep. I only have like half hour videos to make once a week and that's it. So. That's amazing. And, and if you ever have to go through this again, at least you have all the instructions, they you know how to do it, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you want any suggestions on how to do labs in boxes, um, I've, I've got them already pre-planned and ready to go. And what, um, what level class is this? So this is actually for seniors. So I told them I'm expecting like big things. I was like, if I'm shipping you like pH meters and I'm shipping you like oh, yeah. thermometers and temperature probes and dissolved solid probes. And, you know, I, I gave them an example of like a Mythbusters video where they sampled like, is a sponge dirtier than a toilet? And I was like, I expect 10 times more than this. Yeah. So I was like, here's an example of you, something to think of, but like, I changed around my rubric so that the discussion and the rigor of the project are like half of it. Are you expecting to get the thermometer and that stuff back or that you just said they could keep it? No, so I have six students that are local. So most likely after the semester, I'm going to reach out to them and see if I can at least get them back. But I actually bought everything new so that if I don't get it back, then it doesn't, I'm still okay for next year yeah. um, with my budget added as is. And I was even debating doing a, like, if you're not going to give it back to me, then pay it forward and like mm. give them to somebody yeah. else to use or give them to like the kid down the street and teach them about water quality or 
you know, do something like that um, if I won't get it back. And maybe depending on how the semester goes, I'll offer some like extra credit if they use some extra paper um, and show a student how to like make a shadow with a rock or something, you know. <laughs> but I can't think that far in advance. <laughs> Carlos, with your large classes, you're you're always my go-to. I'm like, you know, yeah. who have a, like, the opposite problems I have. What have you guys done? So, um, so we teach a multi multi-section molecular biology class. That's grad, undergrad, postdocs, and DVMs. Good God. Okay. Um, that's more than I uh, Because it's it's. Uh, NC State decided to consolidate molecular biology education, um, and that way we're we're a program that doesn't offer a major. We just get people from all over the campus. Mm -hmm. So we have three sections. We were in the middle of labs, and it's a semester long cloning and expression and analyze. And once they get their clone, they put it into mammalian cells and do some cancer drug screening. So they were at the point where they were going to purify their proteins. And um, I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. But, but we're really lucky because uh, four years ago, we went uh, paperless or electronic lab notebooks. So we have access to data sets from previous semesters. And we've tweak the class so much that every semester is different. But last semester wasn't as different. <laughs> we had hurricanes, but <laughs> we, so we fished out data. Um, and this was all an, another assistant professor uh, is coordinating this semester. I'm off coordinating. Uh, <laughs> so, so she's like, we're pulling data from previous semesters. Every week we're giving them data from uh, another class and that section analyzes this data set that's actual student data. And uh, what we did was uh, it were three faculty members and two postdocs and we said, okay, everyone takes a different week and you'll record a lecture, provide uh, top hat questions, which is our whole everywhere equivalent and provide a worksheet and each person is in charge of one week. Carlos, you're next week. <laughs> which which in a way I grumbled, but I'm like, I can talk about purifying proteins for a while. Um, so we recorded lectures and we we have the next couple of weeks kind of set for for that class. So that one is it's a lot of coordinating and making sure people know where to, what data analysis they are doing. We have six graduate TAs for the lab sections. So it's just kind of getting them to remember that, that it has all changed. So they should actually read the instructions again. <laughs> and uh, it's all virtual data analysis. That's our, our big beast but we have eight week lab modules and my eight week lab module had just started. Mm. So um, there was, it just started week one and they, and they had spring break and then we extended spring break for a week and then we went online. Yeah. And in irony of ironies, that's, my, that's one of my favorite classes. My, it's, it's a class I designed that's all case study based. Cool. So it's all case studies. And the topic is high throughput discovery. So screening drugs, automated microscopy, high throughput sequencing. And I had just worked out this agreement with two companies, the one that makes the robot, Opentrons, and the one that uh, makes the kits, Zymo Research, to do as an eight week project, which would be swab to qPCR. And I hadn't, and I said, let's go with RNA this semester. So it was, uh, their lab project was to program the robot to basically get swabs and get RNA out of them and detect them, which happens to be what Zymo and Opentrons are now doing for a coronavirus. 
So they so there's a direct application there. We won't be able to do any of the wet lab stuff, but the software is open source. So what we ended up doing is in a matter of four days, we 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 broke the class apart and I had just changed it so that the lab component was 50% of their grade. And so we had lab reports and updates. And um, since they can't generate experimental data, we made it so that it's an NIH style proposal that they mm -hmm. have to write. And um, they have to, automation has to be central. They have to somehow program a liquid handler to do it. And it's still going to be either RNA or DNA or some diagnostic or compound screening. We'll see. <laughs> uh, we talk about in these situations, uh, the word triage is thrown around a lot <laughs> and figuring out what you can do and can't do. And um, the answer for people in molecular biology is always seems to come back to bioinformatics, right? Or virtual type stuff. And so that's really neat that you can at least preserve um, that aspect of it and at the same time retain sort of a, a research experience to it. I was really lucky or we were really lucky because this is really a team. I had, I had opened my mouth not only with the companies that we were going to work with them to do this and write an application note and have a blog post with students all contributing what they found out. Um, I had also opened my mouth and said that I would mentor one grad student and one postdoc on, on a teaching experience. And boy, they are getting their teaching experience <laughs> because they were each going to do a guest lecture and, and now with activities. And now it's like, you're not doing a guest lecture. You're doing a online experience that week and your week six <laughs> and, and your week seven. So um, it, it has given me an opportunity to go over the, these are our course outcomes that we got this course approved with these outcomes. So yeah. you have leeway, but not that much leeway and um, come up with something exciting. And what was really lucky or last year, I had a similar case where I had to miss one week because uh, of a uh, uh, required, actually an REU conference. And I had twisted our case study and made it online as, as an interrupted case study through top hat or poll everywhere questions. And I had done that for two case studies. And I was like, well, I guess we're doing that for all six this year. <laughs> so it gives me an opportunity to, to see how the other ones adapt to this format. Yeah, we had a, um, we were just at the beginning ourselves in an intro lab, um, different constituency of students, but similar situation and there are multiple people involved, that there are lab assistants involved, things like that. And we were just at the beginning of a, um, make the students do their own like research experience, not a very sophisticated one. And we too thought about, um, you said NIH style proposal. And so I've been banding the phrase grant proposal to my students who have no, half of the students in this class aren't even majors, so they have no idea what I'm talking about. But like, we'll get around to me describing what it is, which is sort mm -hmm. of uh, me figuring out how to keep this as a, uh, some sort of authentic experience of, okay, we're going to take the literature, we're going to take the stuff we've talked about with databases, we're going to devise a proposal, and then you're going to tell me how you would do this experiment. And then we'll teach them about how science is done along the way, and that'll be great. <laughs> and it's really interesting you bring that up, because I often forget that these are really mixed classes. I have, okay. I have chemical engineers, I have biologists, I have, uh, I have, several PhD students. So uh, this, to, to their credit, the grad student doing the teaching experience and the postdoc came up with a grant proposal idea. And they said, we can, we can still do progress reports and break it down into specific aims. And then they are going to do a project description and then they are gonna wrap it up and then they'll do a 
five minute summary in addition to the proposal. But the first question on, on the forum yesterday was by, and, and I'm not faulting him, it was our fault for not explaining, was uh, from, from a bio major, a genetics major. So I get to make fun of my wife for a while. Uh, she's in genetics program. But uh, the question was, so what do you mean specific games? You already stated the objectives of the assignment. Mm -hmm. What are we writing about in the specific games progress report? What is that? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I guess we have to, we have to back up and explain what specific games are. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the other fundamental things we learned as instructors, right? That it's okay to repeat things that um, we get terrified because we know something's not working well but the majority of our students don't know the difference and they think it's great anyway. All that stuff comes into play in this. And I know from my own personal, um, my own psyche and personality that look, I can forget these things better than anybody. So um, there's been a lot of rehashing of those in my head as a sort of a transition uh, things online. And I'm most of the stuff I've been teaching this semester have been, shall we say, traditional science classes i haven't had to do um like a discussion or a literature-based class and that would be another interesting um tactic that i wouldn't even know how to do in this situation so that's another group of people for another day <laughs> i really love what jamie did with the kits that's awesome oh my god that is really cool you know, when I talked to, because seven of the students came to, so the class is 10, and seven of them were either local, one of them was getting kicked out of the dorm because our dorm is still open um, mm -hmm. on Sunday. So she came to pick it up too, and I mean, they were just saying that they're so stressed about everything. Like this was before, the day before classes even started, and they said that some professors were not like even emailing them, they still don't know what they're doing for the next day. Um, you know, they don't know how things are working. And we were, we were getting too many emails and they were like, I'm, and I said the same thing. I was like, I'm missing important emails because I'm getting 50 emails a day. Mm -hmm. So if I don't get back to you in a day, like don't feel bad reminding me, but all of a sudden I think I marked something as on red and I didn't and it's gone forever. <laughs> yeah. um, we got a specific directive from the powers that be don't do any like, student-wide or faculty-wide emails or anything like that for that particular reason. Yeah. Well, you know, we had some people, so on our campus, they designated you as essential if you have to be on campus. You are non-essential if you can work remotely. And the amount of people who were offended by the fact that they were being called non-essential, and I was like, just stop. Like, just stop emailing them, because we're all, there's only 140 faculty members, so we just, they just email everybody. And I was like, I stop being offended. It's just a term. You still mean a lot. Like, really, <laughs> come, on. come on, people. Um, and I was like, God, this is this is exactly what we're talking about when we're just like, I was like, how about non-essential emails and essential emails? And this is a non-essential email. And it was just, so that seemed to have passed a little bit in the past two days. And I think it was just so much uncertainty and so many changes. And now everything's just like, yep, you're not coming back. Um, don't expect to come back the rest of the semester. That is not going to change. I feel like five stages of grief were just transitioning into maybe acceptance phase about now, maybe. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, now I only wake up to like two or three emails every morning instead mm -hmm. of 50. And I was like, I was getting stressed out by having that many emails. So like, just stop. Nobody needs the extra stress. But, you know, the students you know, when I told them that I wanted to like make these, these boxes and I wanted to turn everything lab based and especially because they all involve environmental sampling. So they have to go outside. And I was like, the videos are going to be no more than 30 minutes. Um, and I'm breaking them up into like no more than like seven minutes per video. Um, and they were just, I was like, you guys like go outside, do something hands-on and then you can come inside because I can't imagine sitting in front of my computer screen all day. Like I'm a very wanting to do things with my hands person. Um, so they, they appreciated it, which made me feel a little bit better because I didn't sleep for like five days. <laughs> so 
And by the way, my dog is right here, and I think she wants to say hi because she keeps looking at me. Sure. One of the fun things about this entire week is meeting everybody's pets. So that's really good. Yes, this is. And she's singing like, in their home. For half an hour, and I don't know who. So now I must sit on your lap. We had that so with me. Oh, I was just going to say, so Jamie, are you planning on like, like checking in with them by video to like see the experiments at all? Or do they have to record yeah, so a video? They're going to they're gonna have to or? post pictures of certain things that they're doing. So when they do like their microbe lab, they have to take a picture of each surface that they're swabbing. And then they have to send a picture of all the Petri plates when they're done mm -hmm. so that I know that they did it. For their soil lab, they have to send me a picture of where it is that they're uh, getting their soils from. If they're doing a water quality lab, they have to show me a picture of where they're getting their water from. With a map attached, if they went to somewhere really cool. Um, so I'm making them pretty much just document everything by picture. And then there's just like places in their lab report that's like, now insert this picture here. So they know before they start that they have all of these pictures that are due for everything. Yeah, but that's great because that's still not super computer intensive and, you know, <laughs> hopefully that they can be just outside doing the documentation and all that too. So and they awesome. use, well, and they usually do. This is the second time that I've kind of sent them into the fields to do different things. So we did a noise lab where they had to like find the noisiest and quietest places on campus. And they did an air quality lab where they had to like check air quality and different things. And most of them, even unsolicited, were taking pictures of like, here's us by event. Yes, here's us in the greenhouse. You know, so they, that actually kind of gave me the idea of like, oh, they're already starting to document things. So like, but yeah, I mean, I have to like keep them accountable for doing it. Um, so yeah, they just have to like document things so that I know that everything was done. And I also am approving everything on their discussion board and, you know, giving them suggestions so that I'm in the loop, but I thought the discussion board was good because they always talk with each other about what they're doing. So I was a little bit worried about like students doing cool things and each other not knowing it. So I was like, now you get to see what everybody's doing. Um, and I told them that even like praise counts as a comment if they say why. So if they're going to say like, that's yeah, really awesome, right. then say it, but also say like, yeah, because I yeah. never would have thought of like testing this place and like, that's a great idea. And so I wish that there was some way that I could also have them somehow share their results, but I was like, I don't want to, five lab reports in six weeks is a lot. So I was like, I don't want to like overburden them with stuff either. So I might just compile some stuff at the end of their results and just like share it to them in like PowerPoint slides or something. So Amy, you said you were mostly online anyway, or? Well, so like all of our basic science lectures are all um, coming from Milwaukee. They had like a live lecture there and then it gets broadcast to medical students. I'm in Wausau and then in Green Bay. Um, and then we had ExamSoft as our testing platform. So all of that's gonna be proceeding pretty similarly. But what the students were upset about was you know, because like I said, they were recording the faculty while they were giving the live lectures and they decided um, just to pull last year's lectures and repost last year's lectures. And so then we were getting questions from students about whether or not they could get their tuition back because they weren't paying anybody to do it for this year. <laughs> yeah. so. <laughs> and again, a lot of these people are clinicians where they're like seeing COVID patients and stuff. So it's not like, you know, and I mean, all of us, you're still having to make adjustments to figure out, you know, how to make all of that work, even if some of the lectures are the same. Um, the other thing I do is, and I was taking some notes because I, I direct a course where students need to do projects with um, community members. Um, and so I was sort of liking this idea that they document more what they're doing out in the community with pictures and if we can do something on our sort of discussion board with that because we haven't gotten great engagement from the students on the um, discussion boards as much as we could. But yeah, we have a like faces in the community assignment they're supposed to be doing next week and they were all panicked that nobody was going to respond to them and they weren't going to be able to get this assignment done and they wanted to push it back and 
we were like, I don't know, people are at home. I mean, it was a little crazy, right? When we were getting all those emails from every company you've ever <laughs> interfaced yeah. with at any point. But, you know, now I think, you know, most of the time, they could still get a response where like you could use a phone still if they you know didn't feel like they wanted to set up web conferencing but again a lot of them haven't used phones a lot so they were a little hesitant at that um so yeah i mean just dealing with some of sort of like that anxiety i mean because again with medical students you have a lot of type a personalities that like a lot of control over the situation um but I, I'm at, I've been on a new campus, like we've only existed for like three and a half years. Mike used to visit me, I was in uh, Minnesota, at the University of Minnesota previously. And I feel like I've just been sort of flying by the seat of my pants for the last three years anyway. So we're just continuing that process here. <laughs> so have any of your institutions talked to you about promotion and tenure yet? Because I know some institutions are extending it or giving the option to extend it and ours has been pretty radio silent on, i mean we still don't know what we're doing with grades yet yeah. um so we're supposed to be voting on whether we're going to do like pass fail or option of pass fail somebody somebody toyed around with two-thirds of credit and hr or the registrar's office i think shot that down as soon as somebody suggested it and was like we're not giving out two-thirds of a credit for getting two-thirds of the way done. And for the um, next few, yeah, I don't, next it was probably some years, like, it has to show up on people's transcripts. Yeah, like you come do that. <laughs> yeah, imagine if you're a one credit class and you get two thirds for it. Like, yeah. so, um, yeah, well, I just noticed, I just literally, while you were asking that question, got an email from the Office of Faculty Affairs wanting <laughs> feedback. So I don't think that was probably like everybody's, like, you know, first, you know, priority, but I'm sure like for a lot of people that that is definitely working its way up there. Yeah, there's been no official declaration from on high from our institution, but um, I should actually ask, I have a couple friends in the tenure process right now, and they may have been told something in their cohort that I don't know. Um, I have seen the list that you uh, allude to of schools, like the, the Google on. Drive. What's that? I, I got it on yeah. a Google Drive. I saw the Google Drive, the, uh, the extending that. their various institutions, extending their processes by a year. Um, and it's all sorts of big schools, small schools. It's a really interesting hybrid mix of schools on this list. So. Yeah, and I don't know if it's because I'm part of the SUNY system, if it's something that has to be approved by all SUNYs, or if it can just be approved by our, institu our institution. And maybe that's why we're like a little bit slower or they don't care yet. Um, but I can assure you anybody like I don't go up for tenure until next year, but I can assure you that anybody's going up this year is losing sleep over that in addition to everything else going on. Yeah. Um, so just uh, the other group I saw that there was some chatter and frustration too is it sounds like anybody that would have been on the job market this year that oh, that's yeah. all yeah. pretty much done. Yeah, and we're even talking about like I'm on our awards committee and I give out summer fellowships and I literally just emailed them all two weeks ago saying they got it and I was like, well, I hope they're working this summer because I'm paying them to work now. Yeah. So, I mean, we have to give it out because I emailed them, but I was like, anything else that we're supposed to be paying students for this summer, I was like, I, you know, I, on, on hold because who knows, like I can't designate a, an undergrad a few thousand dollars and then they can't even like our research labs are completely shut down we're not the students are not even allowed to step foot in any of our buildings so i don't know i i had a student ask me if they could work in my lab this summer and i was like i can't even get in like yeah. don't yeah like talk to me in a few weeks <laughs> so so nc state did send out a very cryptic app uh, and, and I was just pulling it up to see if I could make some more sense because I saw it and I just put it in a folder. But something about extending, ex basically extending uh, tenure track clocks and providing some, um, some leeway or some flexibility and that they understand the situation. And there was a letter memo from the provost uh, seeking feedback. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we received. Um, I um, I put my packet in. I, I'm teaching track, so um, but I put my packet in in August, and I 
once in a while I get this notification from the system saying that it passed this level and now it's at the college and now it's somewhere else. Yeah. And I just got well, a generic message saying it it's 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 gonna take a while. <laughs> Basically, that's what I got out of that message. I'm like, do not check the system. It's it's in there somewhere. Um, that's encouraging. Which which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, but we finally decided to allow students the option to go pass fail. So so that's an option they have starting starting April 6th. Mm -hmm. So they can t turn their grade-based class into a pass-fail. Um, Office of Undergraduate Research is planning on hosting lots, not lots, but hosting their typical, our OUR does a whole bunch of events for tons of summer programs over the summer. Yeah. And uh, they are fantastic. And they, they sent an email out saying, yes, we're, we're doing undergraduate um, events, uh, ethics, some poster sessions, it's all gonna be virtual. Mm -hmm. And housing is still taking students over, over the summer that we know of, but uh, our program, uh, the, way, the way our program looks with labs being closed and uh, most of our research mentors for, for an REU we have being hesitant or not knowing when they would open their labs, we ended up canceling our REU for the summer, oh, the, wow. the NSF one. And we had 500 applicants this yeah, year. So. REU, I, as someone who tries to coach people through REU applications, I was like, oh, damn. That's, yeah, so, yeah I, it, was, it was one of the most painful emails I had to send out last week because we had, I had just sent the one of, yes, you're not getting in, but we encourage you to apply to other REUs. And then we had already accepted 11 people. Out of 500. Uh, and and I, w I was tempted to ask for a supplement. I had the supplement lined up to submit to, to uh, host two more because we had so many deaf and hard of hearing applicants that were, were competitive. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but we, we, there's too much uncertainty yeah. regarding lab space and lab access and travel limitations to, to make it viable. And and we can't go completely bioinformatics because it would it it defeats the flavor of our REU. Yeah. The in-house experiences. It's interesting because OUR just sent an email. <laughs> I hope I hope they are okay. <laughs> we'll wrap it up soon. It's okay. Um, it fine. <laughs> but OUR sent an email saying. Um, by the way, we have undergrad grants and we're extending the application and really encourage online activities. Oh. I'm like, so I emailed Annie back and I'm like, hey, can you give me more information? What online activities are we looking at? I but, direct our undergrad research program here and I sent out conditional acceptance letters last week. That you're welcome for the summer. Congratulations. This is all assuming public health. I came up with a really cool legal flourish like public health restrictions as related to COVID 19 are listed by whatever the date I put out there was. And maybe it'll happen and maybe it wouldn't, but I got it out there and I'll just wait a little longer than I normally do to pay people. So yeah. I'm cautiously optimistic. I think our, our first day of our summer research is supposed to be like May the 19th or something. I'm cautiously optimistic. Maybe we can get people in here, but we'll see. I, I Not my decision, so. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I'm in New York and I don't think that ours is gonna be open this summer. Yeah. So that, and you know, I feel bad for, I have two grad students and I had to, teach one of them how to write a review article today. <laughs> like, so this is what you're going to be doing. Um, we were going to do it anyway, but I was like, you know, the traditional, you turn your intro into a review article thing. And I was like, so you're going to return your review article into an intro later on. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I was like, you're just going to see a massive increase in the number of review articles that come out. <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. Everybody no. I know is having their grad students write review articles. Yeah. Because my students are only two or three years in, so they haven't collected enough data to actually publish anything yet. 
So I was like, yep, review articles it is. You're going to know the background really, really well. That's an interesting population I had not, because I'm all undergrad. Oh, oh my God, the grad students are freaking out. I had it's... thought about like master students, PhD students that are dependent on getting in a lab in camp. I had that did not cross my mind. Yeah, that's... yeah my, my master's student is actually supposed to defend April 29th. Um, and we're keeping the date as usual. And I think that she's going to organize to do it on Google Meet. And I was like, do you know how to do slides on there? Because I don't. So you got to figure that out. Um, we actually have an on-campus like TV station, if worse comes to worse, that they said that I could do some like lab demos. They do, we do a lot with like lab demos there. So that he said it's literally like a cooking show where they'll just like, show you and you're in front of the table and you can mix everything you can even have a teleprompter if you want so i'm supposed to do that friday and i think i'm just going to cancel it because it makes me nervous i just think that'd be vaguely fun i don't know <laughs> yeah, i can barely like do my powerpoint videos of audio i was like i don't think i'm quite ready to go like tv um but i was like worst comes to worst she can have that as an option because she can yeah. have the, the slides behind her because i don't as i don't know what other platforms we can use so she can still have her slides and see her at the same time so she's supposed to work on that but um so she's kind of freaking out um but yeah i know that just the students the, the grad students are just taking it a lot harder and they're like are we gonna have to stay another year is this gonna impact graduation and i was at nyu through hurricane sandy and i was like so i've already been through disaster in new york once I was like, and it didn't majorly impact people's graduations. If things didn't work or you didn't get to it because of it, like committees are very understanding. The majority of people are pretty cool about these things. I mean, oh yeah. yeah. And I know I went to a conference, somebody was doing a, a chronic like mouse study mm -hmm. um, and they put in uh, an abstract for a conference and it got accepted and then Hurricane Sandy happened and all their mice died. So they didn't have any data to actually present so he literally just put up a slide of the hurricane and talked for 20 minutes about like what he was supposed to be yeah. doing, even though he only had one endpoint and it was anticipating having like four or five and like all this protein data. And he was like, I literally have one slide worth of data. Um, and, you know, nobody, nobody said anything negative. So I was like, guys, chill out. It's fine. Mm -hmm. cool. um, Most of our capstone presentations this year or capstone papers aren't going to have a whole lot of solid data in it and we're just looking at it like well this really wouldn't normally be an honors thing right we're like oh nothing matters this year so <laughs> i i had um yeah. graph pad prism by the way it, it, you know that jamie but graph pad prism really really helps and um i tried doing a class with r on some statistics and then it turned into <laughs> a how to log in how to how to download and install packages yeah. session. So um, this year I was like, we're getting GraphPad Prism for students. God, it's so and expensive though. They, they do offer, if you send your syllabus and your ID card, they'll offer student licenses for up to 90 days. Really? For free. And, and up there gets them for 120 students. And I was like, my 12 students are getting graph pad prism yeah. this year and we're going to analyze the high throughput data they generate oh, so yeah. i get the licenses and now we're not generating anything because it's in <laughs> silico <laughs> so so people were asking yesterday on the forum what do we do with graph pad prism i'm like keep it just keep it don't I'll, ever throw out your computer keep it yeah. forever analyze analyze something use it for your quant quiz homeworks you have excel and graph pad to do it i love that i'm gonna go ahead that's a good uh stopping point so i have to go here too but uh thank you guys this has been really good to just share ideas um get people's thoughts about where we are in this current really odd time we're living in uh, <laughs> um as always you have thoughts about what you want to talk about going forward, please let me know. And maybe in a month we'll simply just see what we're doing 30 days past, right? Yeah.
Hopefully not crying. Right. <laughs> Hopefully celebrating the end of the semester is what we're doing. Thirty exactly days. Right. Writing reviews. They were. They were. <laughs> the grad students were really worked up about reviews. The ones from the TAs from these classes, and that, it never occurred to me. I'm like, yeah. that makes perfect sense. Oh, I should okay. be writing a review yeah. now. Everybody's writing a review. That's the students are writing reviews and the faculty are writing grants. Yeah. That's how I think it's going to go. And I was like, I'm actually trying to squeak a grant in, in May, because I was like, I can only imagine the quantity of grants that like NIH and NSF are going to get for the fall. Yeah. True. So I was like, I don't want to be them. I want to be the person who doesn't sleep and gets it out before then for like the June deadline. Yeah. And then not have to compete with like 80,000 people that had nothing to do this summer but write grants. So. All right. Well, on that pleasant note. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking in advance. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. All right. Bye.